With monatomic ions, we're going to have one atom, monoatomic, and we just trimmed out the extra repetitive vowel and made it monatomic. Now, these monatomic ions are going to be pretty straightforward. They're going to do what you expect them to do. So, for our metals, metals have a really low ionization energy and a really low electron affinity. They're going to be good at giving up electrons, not gaining them. So they're going to lose electrons to become isoelectronic with the noble gas that came before them. So they're inner shell stuff. Now the nonmetals are going to have high electron affinity and high ionization energy. They're going to be best at picking up additional electrons, and they'll pick up enough electrons to become isoelectronic with the noble gas. For example, if nitrogen picks up one, two, three electrons, it becomes isoelectronic with noble gas, which is why it exists as the nitrogen three minus ion. Why group two ends up being a sorry, group six ends up being a negative two ion. All of our halogens end up being a negative one ion. Now, metals, they're going to become those plus charges like I described a moment ago. Our anions are going to be formed from our nonmetals. Now, here's our nomenclature. For cations, we just stick the word ion after their name. At least for all of these single and simple ones where there's only one charge state possible. So this would be sodium ion, potassium ion, calcium ion, strontium ion. It goes straight forward like that. Aluminum ion. For our anions, we have a slightly different rule that's still pretty straightforward. We take the element name and we change it to be an IDE ending. So fluorine becomes fluoride, chlorine becomes chloride, bromine becomes bromide, oxygen becomes oxide, nitrogen becomes nitride. You've probably heard lots of these before in your life. That's the origin of it. When we use the IDE ending, we're specifying that it has a negative charge. Now, I do want to emphasize what something is funny about hydrogen. Now, if you remember back, we said that hydrogen, because it has one proton, it's going to start out as the 1s1. It can end up isoelectronic with a noble gas, by gaining plus one electron to become a negative one ion, and that makes it isoelectronic with helium. Or it can lose the electron entirely and become H plus, which is what we've already known and loved probably from any time we've talked about acids before. H plus, H minus. This one is actually so simple that it's got some somewhat complicated behavior. Because it's so simple, it can become either hydrogen ion, that would be its cation form, or hydride ion when it becomes the negative. Now, you've heard of this in your daily life before, whether you realize it or not. If you've heard of a hydride battery, like a nickel hydride battery, nickel is your cation, hydride is your anion, and whatever you've got a cation and an anion paired, you're going to have to have them either with matching charges, just opposite signs, or you're going to have to have enough of them to, to make up for it. For example, if you had a sodium ion paired up with oxygen, the oxide ion is an O2 minus. Double minus, single plus, you'd have to do Na2O. That makes sense because I have two plus ones, giving me a total of plus two charge. I'd have oxygen, which is a minus two. I've got one of them. That gives me a negative two. So that makes some sense for it. That's how we would figure out how to pair these things up. Now, there's also ions where we have to uh, deal with multiple atoms and leave them associated and attached because they actually have covalent bonds in between them, but the whole chunk of them has a charge. Those are going to be our polyatomic ions, and we'll have a few of those to memorize as well.